Hello. I'm Father Rafael Carballo, the pastor of Our Lady of Perpetual Help Catholic Church. When I was assigned here in July 2009, and I drove through the front, I saw the marker that speaks about the dedication date of March 25th, 1962. I had goosebumps. I started laughing. God must have a plan. You see, on March 23rd, 1962, I was born. So the day of the dedication of this house of prayer, I was two days old. God really had a plan that I must journey together with this community. And 50 years have gone by, and a lot of things have changed. But with us we have Father Richard Morrow, the founding pastor of this parish, but also the one who with many parishioners gathered in 1961 to build this house of prayer. It has been many years since Father Morrow got these efforts together, but today we can rejoice in these efforts. It is good to take a trip back a memory lane to see how things were in 1962. In 1960, Bishop Hyland called me into his office and he said, had I been to Carroll? And I said, no. He said, have you been to Cedarton? I said, no. He said, well, you're going to be a pastor of the Hyphen in Parish. You'll live in Cedarton. And he says, you'll build a church in Carrollton. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, the Chalkleys have donated 13 acres. And they said they'd help a little bit, but you're going to have to raise the money. And so I came out here. And the church in Cedarton was well built, tiny. I think you could only hold about but 60 people. And then I came over here and looked at this one. And it leaned in two directions. <laughs> and it had hog ties, they call them, metal rods holding the walls in. And I went in and I, I knelt down to say a prayer. And the kneeler went like that. And, uh, but anyway, the beginning of the parish started with Budapest and a uncle.
but growing up in Carrollton back in the um, 60s when I was in high school, in junior high school, I had two girls my age who were Catholic. And that was it. It was um, the Malloys were here at that time and the Frost. So those two girls were my age. people today, you know, are lucky and they have lots of Catholic friends that they can associate with in school. Well, thinking about this interview coming up, um, not knowing what you were going to ask us about, and I'm just trying to remember things, and I just realized that this is so much a part of who I am, and it's my history. It's my present, it's my future, and that's what you want for every member of your congregation. And we're so fortunate to have the history sure. that we have here, the kind of love and support that we received from, from the church community. And, and I think that's still there. You look around in Mass, and people are friendly, and they smile, and We're all part of something bigger. We're just this little tiny speck of something so much bigger than we can can imagine, and that takes place here in this church. What this means to me, this this anniversary here coming up, it just means that uh, <laughs> that I'm here and I'm, I'm I'm part of it. I guess I mean after all the the years and the struggles and. Uh, People that have come and gone. I mean, I'm still here with with, our, with my family. And um, you know, one comment: my uh, mother was Polish from a large Polish family, and I have letters from her father that she wrote. And uh, you could tell he was very religious in the Catholic faith. And, uh, you know, that's just it's just passed down from generation to generation. And how fortunate you are to to be a part of a a church that's been here for 2,000 years. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just remarkable that. I'm Arnold Willigay, call me Arn. Been in the parish in 1954. And I'm Virginia Willigay, and I've been in the parish. Uh, I was baptized in December 1954 by Father Charles Duke in the little white church. It uh, was on White Street then, but it's on the campus of West Georgia now. And we were married there in uh, January of 1955. Yeah. We was the first, first couple married in that trip. And I think I was the first adult baptized in that church. And, uh, and I, she was in the first confirmation class. Yeah. We had to go to Marietta for confirmation because there was just, just I think there was like four of us, Bill Maddox and uh, Bill, uh, Larry Brooks and Ann Brooks and myself. And we had to go to Marietta to St. Joseph for confirmation. Bishop Highland, and of course he's been deceased for many, many years. But, uh, a lot, of, a lot of water under the bridge all this many years. My name is Pat Dixon. I've been a member of the parish since 1971. I've been active in all phases of the church, seeing the growth. I think there was about 140 families when I came here. Our parish is a blessing to the area. We have uh, made lots of contacts. I'm active now with the, I work with the RCIA group, bringing uh, other Catholics, other people to our faith. As I said before, the uh, church and the, the church community has been my lifesaver. Having lost 
in death. Four sons, a husband, and my dear friend, Monsignor. My parish family and the church setting, I'm hard to drive away. Hi there, I am uh, Deacon Gary Atkinson. I've been a deacon here at Our Lady of Perpetual Help since 2004. Uh, I moved here in uh, 1984 from Indiana. And uh, just a little sideline, uh, above my bed growing up, I had an icon of Our Lady of Perpetual Help. I don't know if that had anything to do with coming here, but I'd like to think it did. Uh, my, uh, ever since I've been here, I've become a, a Knight of Columbus. I've seen the parish grow, and it's really quite rewarding to uh, be with the family that's here, our parish family. And uh, how I got started in the diaconate, uh, it's a five-year program, and I started with Monsignor Reagan uh, with uh, encouragement, uh, actually a lot of prodding from Deacon David Higgins. And uh, so I did go into the diaconate. Um, it was five years. I happened to go through five priests as I went through the diaconate. Monsignor Reagan, and then we had uh, Father John Farley, and then Craig, Father Craig David, then Tim Gajella, and then Father Paul Williams, and now I'm with Father Rafael Carballo. So it's been, uh, I'm sure it's not me uh, that uh, was the cause of all these priests coming to our parish, but it was really, uh, it gave me a lot of growth in my, uh, who I am today, as far as uh, being uh, the deacon. Uh, some of the duties that I do is, uh, I do baptisms. As a deacon, I can do three of the seven sacraments. I can uh, marry, I can baptize, and I can bury. Or like they told us on the first day, I can match, hatch, and dispatch. Hi, my name is Alan Talon, and I have been a parishioner here at Our Lady Perpetual Hope since uh, the year 2000. Um, I came here then and was serving as the Director of Religious Education and served through the year 2005. Um, also was the Youth Minister. Um, you know, I, I love this parish. Um, I had been here before that point um, with my wife, Emily, um, who grew up here in Carrollton and, and grew up here in this church. And uh, this was actually the church that the, her and I were married in. So it's a real special place for us here. I'm in the application process uh, for the permanent diaconate, and um, I have for years now felt a really strong calling um, toward the diaconate. And um, several months ago I received a letter that my name had been put in, put in there as a nomination for it um, to the Archbishop and requesting that I uh, seek an acceptance into the program. So I'm in the application process. And it's really strongly from a desire to serve. Um, I have a, a real deep love for scripture. Um, that, that is, I've had that since college, and um, I want to be able to share that with the people here at our parish. And um, I love teaching, and um, I want to be able to preach as well. And just to be able to kind of really get back to this community in, in a real special way. And, and my wife and I have been very supportive of the whole process. Um, and it's definitely something I wouldn't do without her. Um, it's just a real, real wonderful way to, to get back. Hi, my name is Philip Birdsong, and I am studying to be a priest for the Archdiocese of Atlanta, and uh, Our Lady Perpetual Help is my home parish. And when I first began to seriously consider a vocation to the priesthood, Our Lady Perpetual Help was there to support me through my discernment process. Cooking chickens with the Knights of Columbus and uh, Bible study groups with the Young Adult Ministry are two of the examples that come to mind. These experiences I have gained from the parish 
have helped me to discover joy through sharing my Catholic faith and through serving the community. I am very thankful to consider myself lucky to have such a loving and welcoming parish that I can call my own. Hi, my name is Timothy Broder, and currently I'm doing my pastoral year here at Our Lady of Perpetual Hope. And I started thinking about my vocation and becoming a priest about two and a half years ago when I was a sophomore in college. And right now I'm a senior in college trying to finish up my last semester. Hi, my name is Erin Doyle. I'm a senior at Carrollton High School. And I was baptized here at Ulf um, in 1994 by Father Reagan. And then after moving away and being raised in Washington State, we returned my sophomore year. And it was just great to have the Catholic Church be that one thing that held constant through the move. My name is Terry Fazio, and I first came to this church in 1985. And um, I came here not as a parishioner, but as a college student. I was dating my soon-to-be husband, and my senior knew that I was a music major. And he purchased a huge organ for this church, and he asked me if I would be the first organist, and I said yes. The first time I came here, my name is Salvador uh, Lopez. I came here the first time in 1978. I met Father Reagan for the first time back when my family stayed here for a period of about 10 months and we went back to Nicaragua, that's where I'm from originally and then we came back in uh, the 80s, exactly 85 and I joined the, the church more formally in 1985 along with Terry. Um, when I became Catholic here, there were no, there was no RCIA program at the time. Um, you just had to go meet with the priest one on one and have um, weekly meetings until uh, I remember our, my um, confirmation and first communion was just at a Saturday evening mass, and um, it was just me by myself, just a random day, nothing, no, no Easter vigil, and um, that's how it was then. We used to meet in the. Uh, what do you call that? The crying room? The crying room? Mm -hmm. The crying room. And we were so uh, few that we fit. We, we fitted in that small room. And then we moved to the big church, to the church, and there were only maybe about five pews. And every time we had mass, and little by little, the uh, community increased and increased. And what I recall from uh, 85 is that uh, there were very few Hispanics. Uh, some few, the, the Nicaraguans were the, the majority at the time. And then we had uh, some community of Mexicans, people from uh, Mexico were the second group. And very, very few Cubans some Cubans, and I think that's, that's what I remember. As pastor of this community, there is a lot I see. And one of the most beautiful things I see about this place, about this beautiful parish community, is the diversity in this community. Children from all races, children from all backgrounds, they meet here together, not only to play, to learn, but also to pray together. See many of these beautiful faces that have come from Georgia, from the north, from the south, from the east and the west. Fieles a la recomendación del Salvador y siguiendo su divina enseñanza. Nos atrevemos a decir la oración que Jesús nos enseñó. Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga a nosotros tu reino. Hágase tu voluntad en la tierra.
tierra como en el cielo, danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día. Perdona nuestras ofensas, como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en la tentación y líbranos de Líbranos de todos los males, Señor, y concédenos la paz en nuestros días, para que, ayudados por tu misericordia, vivamos siempre libres de pecado y protegidos de toda perturbación. Mientras esperamos la gloriosa venida de nuestro Salvador Jesucristo. Tuyo es el reino, tuyo el poder y la gloria por siempre, Señor. Amén. 